Many familiar businesses are actually owned and operated by franchise holders and not by large national corporations. Changes in federal regulations could alter that relationship in a negative way. Eric Baim of Reason Magazine gets details from Jarrett Dieterle of the R Street Institute. Some new rules issued earlier this month by the National Labor Relations Board, that's the NLRB, could fundamentally change the way that franchises like your local McDonald's or Burger King, basically any fast food joint you might go to, how those things operate. And really, it's an it's an attack on small businesses, as my guest today will explain. Hi, folks. I'm Eric Bain with Reason Magazine. Thanks for joining us on this edition of American Radio Journal. That aforementioned guest today is Jarrett Dieterroll. He is a resident senior fellow at the R Street Institute and the author of Give Me Liberty and Give Me a Drink, a book about the history of alcohol in the United States. Uh, We're not going to talk about booze with him today, though, but Jarrett, thanks for taking some time and joining us here on the call. Thanks for having me, Eric. Great to have you, as always. Let's start, before we talk about what the NLRB is doing, with a little bit of a a background here on on just how franchises kind of work. Because, like, I go to the drive-thru at McDonald's. I don't think about the business model behind all that. I just want my my $1.99 chicken nuggets. How does that work, and, and like, how does this whole system kind of operate? I think you're exactly right that most people don't realize what businesses really operate as franchises or not. But... Uh, particularly in sectors like fast food, fast casual, you know, hotels, um, auto repair shops, retail stores, uh, they they all um, in some form or another often operate under the franchise model. And basically, all it means is that you know there's there's like the parent corporation, and then the independent outlets are exactly that. They're often independently owned, but they use obviously the branding and the procedures and the protocols uh, that the parent has developed. And, um, you know, places like McDonald's, I think it's like over 90% of McDonald's outlets are not run by the corporate parent. They're run by, you know, independent local people uh, in the community. Um, You just can't tell the difference because they're obviously like all serving the the same food. And obviously the the reason it exists is it really helps, you know, businesses scale to size. I mean, McDonald's uh, would really not realistically be able to run all the outlets it has all over the world um, if it was trying to do it all from a central location. And so uh, that, that, that's why they, they do the franchise model. It's been very successful, obviously. It's been very successful. It's obviously good for consumers as well as the, the small business people that own the franchises. And that now the National Labor Relations Board wants to change a pretty fundamental part of, of the way that relationship works between the parent company and the franchisee. Tell us what they're trying to do. Yeah, so they've uh, issued um, a rule making that uh, is called a joint uh, employer. And essentially what they're doing is blurring the lines and merging more of the uh, parent company and these individual uh, independent franchisees. And the, the upshot of that is that, you know, things like workplace labor law violations or uh, even collective bargaining with unions instead of that just taking place with the individual franchisee or the independent franchisee, it is uh, much easier for McDonald's parent corporation to get uh, roped into that, uh, whether it's litigation or, or collective uh, bargaining. And, uh, you know, that obviously doesn't make sense because in a lot of cases it is just a localized issue that's going on. Obviously, the unions would much rather be able to organize uh, with the parent corporation. But yeah, so that it, what it does is essentially um, uh, kind of neuter effectively the, the franchise model because uh, all of a sudden it's not really operating the same where uh, it's actually like a distinction and it's it's blurring the lines. The benefit here from the union's perspective, right, is that they can negotiate like one wage. And that means that the workers who work in in rural Indiana are going to get paid the same as McDonald's workers in like New York City. Yeah. And I mean, also like, I mean, the plaintiff's attorneys, right, that are, you know, doing lawsuits for workplace violations. I mean, they'd much rather sue the parent corporations than just a independent franchisee in, 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 in Indiana somewhere. We're talking with Jared Dieterroll. He's a resident senior fellow at the R Street Institute, and he's got a piece that you can check out at Reason.com this week, taking a look at this new joint employer rule at the National Labor Relations Board, this new rule that they've put out there. Jared, not a whole lot of time left, but this is, I mean, this is really just another attack by by federal bureaucrats on the kind of flexibility that makes the makes the economy work. 
Yeah, it does. And we're seeing it more and more. I mean, we've seen things like tipped wage bans in places like Washington, D.C., where, you know, waiters can't make up the um, minimum wage with tips. And uh, we've seen it with uh, the crackdown on independent contracting in places like California. Uh, there's a lot of examples out there, which we, we obviously don't have time to go into, but it, it all fits under the rubric of uh, businesses operate in different ways. That's a good thing. That's what gives our economy dynamism. And we're basically trying to one size it, particularly on the progressive left, and make it all the same, which will make it less dynamic uh, ultimately and will hurt uh, both workers and businesses. Trying to one size it, trying to perhaps supersize it as well, supersize the bureaucracy, if you will, bring it all back around to the uh, McDonald's. I don't think they sell those anymore, right? That's like that's a throwback for us 90s kids. We remember the, the supersize it ads. Uh, Jared, thanks for taking some time with us. This is really fascinating stuff, really interesting stuff. Stuff. Thanks for taking the time and explaining it all here. Thanks for having me. And again, that's Jared Diderol. He's resident senior fellow at the R Street Institute, a friend of Reason Magazine as well. You can check out his latest piece at Reason.com. The headline there, New Labor Rules Will Screw Over Your Local McDonald's. You could also pick up a copy of his book, Give Me Liberty and Give Me a Drink. Great, uh, great gift. Holiday season coming up. Grab a copy of his book and find more of his work online at rstreet.org. For Reason Magazine, I'm Eric Bame. Catch me right back here next week on another edition of American Radio Journal.